I honestly have no idea, but that sounds promising. Is there a stick? We can't, we can't go any further because, yes, I will, but I need to open that first. So look at how brave James is, everybody. Let's watch James as he does his business. I'm trying to observe who can we, James, I can't see a, a thing. So James is going to lift it. Um, is it the fan, James? Apparently it's the fan. Um, it should be the fan belt is what it sounded like. We got something caught in the fan belt or in the fan itself and that causes that sound that you heard. That sounds like it's about to implode and that's generally not a good no, thing. No, we have a major issue. We have a major issue, James. the radiator. Oh, goodness gracious me, that sounds terrific. It sounds like we have a radiator issue, which is rubbing against the fan, which is going to cause a major problem. Nikki, now would be a good time to send you to Lauren, um, if possible, because it's going to take more than just looking under the bonnet to fix this in order for us to get home. Oh, uh, my goodness. James, can I tell you what's happening? Yeah. David is still changing the IR light. That is amazing. Isn't he a proper cam -op? Isn't he a proper cam -op? I know, James, you did it in all of one minute, but our proper cam -op is taking five minutes or longer to change said, well, to put IR lights on, apparently. James is shaking his head. But I'm afraid we're not going to be going anywhere, Nikki. Um, so you're going to be sending to Lauren, and I think that's the end of it for us for now. We're going to have to try and sort this out, but off you go. We haven't gotten onto the bottom, James. Did you just point to the camera? Yes, I saw a, see a malfunction, but I think it's... <laughs> malfunction, another one. There's a, there's a, it looks like something's broken at the bottom there. It does look like something's a broken. A little plate, maybe. Yes. So it's, it's not the only thing that broke. No. <laughs> yes. So if you're wondering what's going on, is James and I are stricken in the wilderness in the dark, and um, yes. We may spend all night out here. Mobile Paddy's asking if there's anything you can't do, James. There are many things I can't do. Catch a ball is one of them. Yes, as much as I like to think I can, but I really can't. And I also can't fix cars at all. No, well, I don't think this is fixable either. No. Yes, so what has happened, is just so you all know, is there was a freak stick that has gone underneath the grill, underneath the bull bar, and gone straight into the radiator and bent the radio entire radiator into the fan. Thus rendering us useless. Rendering us useless. We've also lost a blade of the fan. We don't know how that happened. And also the chances of that one stick going through the minute hole that it did to get to the radiator were less than 0 0.001. Yes. You've actually had a fine week. What happened yesterday, James? Yesterday I went to town in the uh, in company car and I parked at the petrol station, what you in America would call the gas station <laughs> and um unlike in america where you have to do it yourself you know you pump your own gas here we don't do that yeah there are a number of people to help you do that so the very kind fellow was filling my car up next to me there was a deeply aged individual um who just seemed slightly distray and what he did was he he had a big land rover with his spare tire on the side like the ones we have in the mara and as uh, I was kind of getting some stuff out of the door and figuring out the credit card and getting the code because I have to save it in a secret place because I can't remember. <laughs> this is a company credit card. Uh, he started his car up and I knew he'd started his car up because of two things. Uh, the first was the sound, of course, of the yes, engine. The other makes. was I was enveloped in a black, noxious, cloud of diesel fumes like the ones we envelop all of the poor residents of the Mare in when we're there. Anyway, this man then pulled away and I thought to myself as he started moving, I thought there's something wrong here. Then I remembered very quickly what it was and I looked in time to see the spare tire coming towards him and I got out of the way like that. Uh, but no, I didn't manage to move the door out of the way and he caught the door and pulled it 270 degrees around. He then emerged from his car after I went, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he emerged from his car and he said the following to me. He said, why is your door open? 
I said, because I... <laughs> I mean, how do you even answer that question? Are you getting some stuff out of it? Well, I'm standing outside. I'm standing I... here? Oh, <laughs> what kind of question is it? Yeah, you can't open your door like that? I said, like what? I said, I'm getting some stuff out of the car. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't open when I looked. <laughs> so I said, that was my favorite line. Yes, it wasn't open when I looked. So I said, have you got a mirror? And then I looked at his car and I said, you have a mirror. Yeah, but I didn't check my mirror. So I said, well, whose fault was that? Well, uh, this can't be considered my fault. So I said, are you joking? At which point he took a deep breath and he went off and he parked his car and we both took a deep breath and we swapped details and eventually we shook hands and agreed that uh, we shouldn't be angry with each other and that our insurance companies, for which we pay a lot of money, will sort of the problem out. And then you went to the police station. And then I went to the police station which to go and delightful. report the incident. And that took 45 minutes of standing, leaning on a faux granite uh, counter. And then we went to the panel beaters. So it was a very, very entertaining day. And it was topped off by a lunch we thought we'd treat ourselves to. This was David, Lauren and I. And uh, you will find a, a, it'd be difficult to find a worse meal, I think, than the one we had. We had Shame. three of the most tasteless pizzas the Lowfeld has to offer. And let me assure you, the Lowfeld has a lot of tasteless pizzas to offer. <laughs> yes, that's true. Right, Rosalind wants to know, will we be safe out here? Well, Rosalind, I don't know if you can see behind me, I'll put my lights on, hold on. Where's the little They're light? Right. They're not. There, look, there is a car that has come to our rescue. Hi, Marcel. Marcel. So Marcel has no, appeared. Yes, he has come to rescue us, and so we will be perfectly safe. I would imagine that two guides that spend a vast majority of their time out here. Would... Did you see Hukumuri? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Was he walking down the road? First time you've seen him. Yeah. How wonderful. Awesome. There we go. You see, good comes from bad situations. Our car is broken, but Marcel saw Hukumuri for the first time ever. Right. We're going to get our car hooked up and get towed. Maybe the next time you see us, we'll be on a towed safari. Yes, wonderful. We've done, we've done yeah, roadside assist safari. Mm. Now we're going to do towing safari. Um, but in the meantime, let's send you to a real safari, which is Lauren and David on camera and see what they've got to find. We are being towed, but you know, here at Wild Earth, we are very much forward thinkers in terms of what we do. And so the new trend, a new, um, what would the word be, James? The new trend, I suppose, in safariing is electric safari vehicles. And so we thought we'd give you an electric safari vehicle experience. This is what it would feel like, other than the fact that there is a Mahindra in front that is choking us with dust and fumes and all kinds of other horrible things as... Yeah, there's a leopard as well. Now, I don't know... Oh no. <laughs> what have you done, Jack? I can't actually speak because... <laughs> James, you know what's happened? What? <laughs> We've driven over the tow rope. <laughs> Do we have a leopard in the road now, but we, we, we've driven over the tow rope too, which is a major, major problem. Um, so we're going to have to make sure that my soul doesn't drive because otherwise uh, there's going to be a big problem. I'm sorry, but this is just quite something. Marcel, um, we are over your tow rope, so please don't start the car. I'm going to try and get off it somehow, but we are slap bang on the tow rope. Oh, goodness. Come on, Rusty. <laughs> James, we're moving at least. Yeah. There we go. I think we're going to be off it shortly. All right. <laughs> now, Hukumuri is, of course, in front of us. So that's electric safari, everybody. Um, bar the, the laughing, um, that's uh, pretty much what it would sound like. So if any of you are going on a safari someday soon, Exactly, electric safari with a leopard just shows you how stealthy you can be that you can find a leopard. Unfortunately, um, it's in front of Marcel, so Marcel can't move. I at least have... You can go ahead, but slowly. So we have to communicate to Marcel. Well, slowly, slowly. 
Ah, there we go. Nice little jerk. That's also the nice thing about a um, electric safari vehicle. Marcel, can you go forward a bit more? Yes, he's still on the road, James. But if Marcel can go forward a bit more... Marcel, can you go forward a bit more to the left? So we're going to try and attempt a safari vehicle. Do you know what we could do, James? <laughs> well, if we weren't linked up to a tow rope, if we actually could probably in all likelihood... More, Marcel? I'm going to use my light. There we go, James. Now, try it now. I could probably... There he is on the road. Yes, I think Lauren should come. Um, we're on virtual access, um, uh, Nikki, but you can see Hukumori is moving. I'm just using a bit of spotlight just so we can actually see him because the infrared won't reach that far. But if she just comes up virtual access from the power line, she'll get him on the road itself. But um, <laughs> yes, that was quite funny. I do apologize about that. I almost had tears at one point because uh, <laughs> just this moment of chaos of electric safariing which was a very exciting and then a leopard because and then we went over the tow rope and the tow rope well i could just envision that marcel was going to go and the next thing we were going to have a major story in yes well i'm glad you all think this is epic i mean it's certainly not the best wildlife um <laughs> um pictures that you could ever see but certainly entertaining it was world class. Did you enjoy that, James? The yes, the picture is world class. I mean, that is, that is blue chip right there. I would say, quality, quality, quality picture of Hukumuri about five kilometres down Fuyatela Access. Nancy, you. <laughs> oh, that's even better, James. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, you say your car problems are never this fun. No. There's a leopard there. There is a... <laughs> I can't laugh and keep the spotlight still enough to actually illuminate. <laughs> oh, Lauren, please get you to save us all. <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry. Andre's going to see this. Yes, John. <laughs> You're subject to a review, aren't you, James? Yeah, You're going to be reviewed for that segment. And it's going to be quite hilarious, I, because that was quality filming right there. You've done a sterling effort, James. Well done. Um, as you can see in the distance that there's some lights there, which means that you're going to get a proper wildlife experience instead of two clowns that are just <laughs> laughing and crying and showing you grainy pictures of this <laughs> leopard walking down the road. Anyway, off you go to Lauren. We're going to try and get our way home. Turn my lights off because I've probably blind everybody. Here we go. The magic moment of Tristan and James being towed by the famous Marcello. Hi, Marcel. Guten Abend. Hello. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. Bye, guys. <laughs> go to power lines.